So as it turns out, most people don't mountain bike. It's only a few of us in the grand scheme of things. And when I talk to people from the outside, they have all sorts of weird questions. And in fact, they view what we view kind of weird. Well, for example, we think it's perfectly normal to hit jumps, but people who don't mountain bike, they think one of either two things, either A, we're daredevils or we're crazy or we have no self-preservation instincts, or they think we all must be highly accomplished physicists because how do we know exactly how fast to go to catch the landing perfectly and not get hurt? Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now the truth is, it's almost all intuition. You get enough experience hitting jumps, you can feel whether you're going fast enough, you can spot the landing, you know how hard you need to boost it, pull up. But it would be interesting to know how fast we're actually going to hit certain jumps. 12 miles an hour. And so we're gonna measure the distance between some lips and landings, and we're gonna see how fast I'm actually going to clear them. So this is a really cheap version of what a police officer flags you with. Here we go, tells us miles per hour. Let's see, I'll just throw this rock. Yeah, that's about the speed of my fastball, 21 miles per hour. And so can I change that to kilometers? No. And so we'll put the conversion on the screen. So what do I need this for? You can get your speed from a phone, a fitness tracker, a cell phone, but not really. Those aren't gonna give you instantaneous speed. They're kind of measuring your distance from one point to another. We wanna see what speed I'm going right before I hit the lip of the jump. So this is the banana cannon. You've seen it before. Launches into this berm over here. It's at about 13 degrees and from the end of it, to the spot I land is about 17 feet. We'll put the conversion on that below. How fast do you think I'm going to clear that gap? Let's find out. Okay, so first of all, there's an Amazon radar gun designed for like Little League. So we're not expecting super accurate results, but we did this a bunch of times and the best we can see is that 16 to 18 miles an hour is what I'm going to clear that jump. That's actually faster than I thought. I guessed 14. Now that might sound weird that I didn't know how fast I had to go to clear that jump. But like I said at the beginning, this is all intuition. I'm not thinking numbers in my head. I'm thinking, okay, this feels fast enough to clear this jump. So now that we got a reading on the banana cannon, there's a double right after it. And I would imagine I'm going about the same speed to clear that, maybe even a touch faster. When you go over jumps, you're actually gaining speed by pumping the landings and it's a little further downhill. So I don't know, 17 to 19 miles an hour. Let's find out. So I assume we're gonna go about the same speed on this one, yet very different jump, much steeper, about 40 degrees at the top of the lip, uh, about the same distance, 17 feet to where I'm gonna be landing. And so I'm not sure what to make of that. So 16 to 18, kind of makes sense. I'm not taking any cranks after the landing. There's not that much space. I'm clearing the same gap. I'm going the same speed, but I'm getting way more amplitude. I'm going way higher in the air. So where's that extra energy coming from? And the answer is it's probably coming from the lip. It's coming from pumping. On the banana cannon, it's kind of flat and mellow. And so I'm just riding off of it. On this jump over here, there's a real curve to the lip that I can work and my body position going off of it is gonna have a great deal to do with how much amplitude I'm getting. And anybody who hits a lot of jumps knows that if you're approaching a jump and you're not going fast enough, you'd better yank up really hard to try and make the landing. So pretty interesting. But there's a jump up there that I suspect I'm going a lot slower for. This is the snake pit skinny gap. There's a skinny line over here and then it just abruptly ends with this lip. Then to where I'm landing is about seven feet long. Not very far, but landing is skinny. This lip is at about 25 degrees and like I said, it's about seven feet to where I'm landing. How fast do you think I'm gonna go for that?
So we're getting between 12 and 14 miles an hour every single time. Even if that's close to accurate, it sounds right, to be honest. I was imagining that it would be slower, but once I was up there and I felt the wind in my face, I thought, oh, I'm going a little bit faster than I had originally anticipated to clear this, and this confirms that. And so what do we do with this data? Well, nothing. It's just for your curiosity. It's just for fun. You take this to your physics teacher, they're gonna be like, I don't know what to do because physics teachers only know how to calculate things when they're on a frictionless plane on a planet with no atmosphere. I learned that in college. But while we have this speed gun, I am curious how fast I go when I'm just kind of blasting through a rock garden. Zero. Zero point zero. Zero point zero. All right, let's see what it does with this. Twenty-four? Oh yeah! I still think it might be wrong because I was going to at least 200. So on the little rock garden test, I found out I'm not going as fast as I thought I was going. I thought I was going about 500 miles an hour, but turns out I was going about 24. But I think we did learn some interesting things today. We know what speed we're going to hit these jumps on Burn Peak, and honestly, it's kind of about what I thought. It's not crazy fast and it's not crazy slow. A lot of it is kind of how you work your body to go over it. It was something I was kind of curious about and I've never seen anybody do exactly this. I've seen during downhill races, they'll have like a screen that shows how fast somebody's going through a section, but I've never really calculated how fast I was going over jumps. And so now I know and now you know. I hope you learned something today and Actually, on second thought, don't learn anything from this. The next time you go up to a jump, don't say, oh, Seth said go 17 and a half miles per hour. It doesn't work like that. So I hope you didn't learn something today. And if you did learn something, or if you did or didn't learn something, I hope you found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Oscar, look. <laughs> Twelve miles an hour. <laughs>